house on West Beach and Vine also oh, was a dark place. Could be. It might have been. I mean, because they, they needed well, overflow for a while. Kids, uh, when I was going to Vine Junior High, they come to school. Mm -hmm. I believe it. Well, they, they went to the nearest school back, that they did back then. Well, of course, the, but the one on West from, uh, on Vine and West they had a higher fence. Yeah, well, okay. Now this is, and because of the children's home, I could identify where this picture was because it was on eBay and all it said was Southwest Street Business Section. And I thought, where is that? Where could that possibly be? There's a park of some kind here because those are all really lots of trees and there's a house and where could this, po and finally I realized it's looking north on Westnage from pretty much in front of Martini's or the intersection of Village. And what you're looking at, that's the Central Pharmacy building that's still there, okay? And this is Barker's that is now gone. Um, and then what you're, the reason it looks like a parkland there, because at first I thought it was looking out Westnage and that that was Pioneer Cemetery Park, okay? But then I realized that the high school was set back. And so those are all the trees and the park-like setting that, the, that this high school is behind. So that's why it kind of had that look to it. And I just love this little guy standing there just, you know, you're taking a picture of me? Yeah, you're taking a picture of me? And there, I guess that is a streetcar track, so I guess the... The streetcar did run out West Nitch. This is this. I'm pretty sure this is right around 1908 because what I have here. This is Sanborn fire insurance maps were kept starting in the 1880s, 1870s, and in 1908 in Kalamazoo they started covering more than just the businesses and commercial uses. This is um, they covered the neighborhoods and everything lines up perfectly because there's the children's home. So where that little boy is standing is right about there, and this is where the camera is right about here because you can just glimpse the wire fence around the children's home there, and then this building is there, and that building is there. So that's what, that's what kind of keyed it for me. So these maps are absolutely spectacular assets. If you want to know what buildings look like, here's the, this is the uh, Justice Burdick House here, okay, which looks pretty much the same today as it did then. And it's neat because if you're looking at a house and you say, did there used to be a porch on this or not, the little dotted line around the front of the houses shows where the porch was. And it'll even say one or two, whether it was a one or two story porch. There's tons of information in the Sanborn maps. And they have them at the library. Yeah, on microfilm and on, on paper. This is what Western State Normal School looked like when it started. It was this one wonderful, glorious building set up there. And the stairs went right down the center. Okay, unlike today where they go down the sides, went right down the center. And it was flat on top. And it was just, that was just, the way it was. And then within a few years, and I'm not sure exactly when, about 20, 15 years, less than that, they made it bigger. Well, that works too. And then there were tennis courts down the bottom. Down here there were tennis courts. And then you can just see the funicular, the tram is there. Um, and, and right there at Bellevue Place, Bellevue was like this little tiny subdivision that was built pretty much just to cater to students because it, was, it wasn't there until the College started up and then suddenly, bang, it's there. It's developed by a gentleman named Leroy Hornbeck, who was a real go-getter developer. Um, this did is... Um, did Olmsted do any... Uh, he did the drawings. It's never been used. Oh. Yep. Frederick Law Olmsted did do drawings for landscaping for that part of East Campus, but they've never been implemented. Um, this is the fire station at the corner of Westnage and Wheaton. And you can see what it does not have anymore. It used to have a divider, but when they were when it was still being used as an active fire station, the archway was not big enough for the newer fire engines. So they took that out, as they have on most of the fire stations of this vintage. In fact, all of them. Um, the one on Charlotte has just had its divider put back in because the folks that bought it are restoring it. So they've got it back to, and it's the same. It's a twin to this. Now, this, these are taken by the same guy that did Helen Wells' house, okay? So they're not quite as professional and everything. But I believe that he was up there just about the time they were building East Hall because this looks like a construction site to me. There's, um, you know, there's water, there's all sorts of things, and this is all still green down there. This is, um, this is Walnut Street here. This is a giant acid burn. But that's, that's Walnut Street. And then this is Walnut here. And so over here, you're looking at, this is probably Vine Street here. And this is Walwood, which is now just got houses facing it. And it stops right about here. But it used to go all the way to the top of the hill. OK? So and these are, these, the, a lot of these houses are still there. The one with the, the burnt facade is there somewhere. I think it's that one, where they put the burnt 
Barnsley. In fact, that is it. Let's see, there was this little storefront there, the little two-story storefront. There was a storefront. Every few blocks, there was a storefront of some kind. People would sell stuff in the neighborhood. Um, this, I love this. I finally figured this one out. How, this is taken from um, almost to the corner of Westnage and Vine, and obviously looking out at the normal school on, on, the, t on the campus. So that 1910 date may be a little bit early. But I think what was happening here is because we've got other pictures that were taken when the, when the fire department got its first hook and ladder truck. <laughs> and my guess is that the guys were driving around taking pictures of things from up high. <laughs> because we've got one of them in front of, the, in front of the park building downtown that's now gone with their hook and ladder truck showing it off. Yeah, Lynn, did you have something? Right. It could be, but, but I think it's too high for that. Unless they were on a ha tall ladder. They could have been on a tall ladder. On that could be. That could be. I like the hook and ladder idea because I know firemen <laughs> a little bit too. So. But, um, and you can see the trees are beginning to grow up a little bit around East Campus there too. So, and most of those houses are still there. There's a few, and you notice here, you do see very clearly that Dutton goes through, um, and it hasn't gone through there for as long as I can remember. So these are some more views. This is one I came up across on eBay, and I was fascinated by, and nobody else in the world would ever want it, because it may see south, it says southeast from asylum. And I don't know how they get that, because this is pretty much taken from in front of about 812 Wheaton. Um, because this view is like the view out my kitchen window looking across the, uh, the Vine neighborhood. And you can see these houses. These are when the trees were much smaller. These houses on Axtell line up perfectly, so especially these, these very, this very distinctive um, gable end here, and then the, those off in the distance. So this is the view literally looking southeast towards the Bryant paper mill and some of the big paper mills from um, uh, the side of Wheaton Hill, I guess you could call it. Okay, And then this is looking the other direction from almost the same location. My house, this is the house next to my house. My house is right there, and I can't tell if it's there yet or not. I don't, it might be. I, I don't know. I don't think so. And my pool is right about there. Um, anyway, and so these houses, so this is like, nobody else in the world would want these pictures because you've got to admit, other than the fact that we know it's the Vine neighborhood, these are really boring pictures, okay? <laughs> but we know it's Vine, so it's like, oh, look at that, a glimpse into the past, you know? It's pretty cool. These are more views. This is Normal Hill. This is a little bit later, 1911. And this is Walnut and Davis. Those houses are all still there, lined up just like that, probably built by the same developer. Whenever you see what looks like pretty much the same house over and over again, except maybe the gables are a little bit different, that's probably the same developer. He probably built all three of them and just lived in one until he sold them. And there's the steps leading right down from the center. Yep. Yep. So it was a more of a hill than it is today. I mean, it's clear to me that it used to be a much more gentle slope than it is today. And, and now it's like whew, down to that practice field. It's a much flatter surface. And then this is kind of the same sort of view, only you're looking towards Cedar Street. And this, this, this big brick house here on Cedar is still there. It's got slate in the end gables, which is relatively unusual. And then you can see all the way downtown, you know? You can see all the, that's, and this has got to be um, after the, the Kalamazoo building went up, obviously, because um, that's the tall building there, our first skyscraper. This one was another one. It's like, okay, this would be boring to anybody else in the world. But to me, because I like to prove to people how people used to build porch rails, um, this is a view up Park Street. I believe from just a little bit past Vine, because only if you really know the house really well and you have a magnifying glass, you can just barely see the Ardexter Walker house right there at the corner of Dutton and Vine. And this shows all the different types of porch rails and the fact that apparently folks back in the 19th century and the early 20th century felt that you could competently go up and down a set of steps without a handrail. <laughs> One of my current battles at the city is you don't need a 42-inch handrail to go up and down three steps. But we're working on it. This one is a picture. I just love it because the symbol for the Vine neighborhood is the porch. And this is a lady on Burdick Street sitting on her front porch just enjoying what is clearly a fairly pleasant summer day. <laughs>